CME Info's continuing education and board certification programs bring the conference to you. The following is a video sample from the Oakstone Institute's Pulmonary Board Review course. This excerpt is from course director Dr. J. Allen Cooper Jr.'s lecture titled Occupational Asthma and Industrial Bronchitis. Occupational asthma can be divided up into essentially two major forms and that is asthma with latency, asthma without latency. Uh, asthma with latency in also can be divided up into a couple of forms and that is IgE dependent and independent. And so what we're looking for there is IgE dependent is much like your uh, allergen induced asthma uh, that's not related to the occupation, an IgE related type of phenomenon. On the other hand, the IgE independent is where the agent can directly cause some kind of uh, inflammatory reaction and it is not the classic uh, allergic phenomenon. And then the asthma without latency is, as it, as it states, an asthma that occurs very quickly after exposure to some agent. And this has been uh, called in the past and, and is really a pretty good term, is reactive airways dysfunction syndrome. We'll be talking about that. The other point to remember is that in the workplace, asthmatics can have their asthma exacerbated by the workplace. So uh, there are two terms here that, that I think are important. Number one is work exacerbated asthma, and that is where asthma is triggered by various forms of work-related factors in workers with pre-existing asthma. And oftentimes, I mean, this may be the most common presentation of somebody with asthma that is induced, that is worsened by the workplace. So again, the history becomes very important to determine whether the patient had asthma prior to the work. Uh, and this is in uh, contrast to true occupational asthma, where asthma is actually caused by or triggered de novo by sensitization to a specific substance. So that's an important point to remember, and an important point to remember when you're evaluating these patients, because uh, obviously many of them will come to your office saying that they went to work and they started having asthma and the work is uh, the cause of that asthma. It's very important to figure out whether it's truly the cause or whether it's just what's exacerbating the asthma. Okay, another term that I think is important when we're thinking about the incidence of asthma in particular jobs is what's called the healthy worker bias. And that states that workers who become symptomatic in the workplace tend to leave the job. So what you tend to do uh, when you're trying to find out the incidence of occupational asthma and due to some agent and some job, uh, what you tend to do is underestimate it because the ones who go in there and after about a week or so they're coughing and wheezing and they realize this is not the place for them and they leave, those are the ones that are not being counted when you're trying to figure out whether they have uh, what the incidence of asthma is. So that's an, an important uh, term. So what causes occupational asthma? To put all that, every single agent that's ever been associated with uh, asthma on a slide would be um, probably fill it up way too much. But so what I chose here is to really think about general categories of agents that cause asthma. And you can think about agents that have very high molecular weight, so they're large molecules, and agents that have very low molecular weight, so really very small molecules. And I'm going to talk specifically about some of these, but I think that, um, you know, kind of the classic uh, high molecular weight agent is either uh, flour, flour dust, which has uh, allergens in it, and uh, those can cause IgE antibodies, animal products, and we'll talk about that. And then kind of the classic low molecular weight agents that we think about, probably the ones that you will see the most is isocyanates, and that is because they're used in so much, uh, so many industries, including plastics and, uh, and uh, spray painting and, and other things. So I think it's good to think about high and low molecular weight agents. Obviously, if you have a patient who comes to your office and says, I'm working in this particular environment, and they bring in literature on what's present in the environment, uh, there are ways to search that to see if they have uh, been reported to cause asthma, and I think that's an important thing to do. Top quality board certification reviews and continuing education programs, guaranteed. For more information about this self-study activity, go to www 
www.cmeinfo.com slash 787V or call us at 1-800-284-8433.